this is problem number eight of chapter 19. So here we are studying conservation of angular momentum. So let's look at this satellite. So the problem states that the satellite has a mass of 200 kilograms and the radius of gyration of about that axis C is 0 0.1. We give it right here, meters. And excluding the solar panel A and B. So they are given the radius of gyration on only this, the body of the satellite, which is the yellow part. And then we have two panels. Each of them is 15 kilograms, and they are giving us the dimensions of those panels. And they are asking us to find, given the angular velocity when the panels are uh, extended, find the angular velocity, let's call this one, and this two, when the panels are retracted. So they are saying that when they are extended, they have a 90 degree angle between the panels and the axis of rotation, which is C. So we can imagine that this uh, satellite is spinning with respect to this axis, right? So, and they retract the arms. So you can imagine that the, the arms go zero degrees. So if we see the top view, we will represent our plane of motion. We will so see something like that. Let me draw the top of view in position one. When the panels are extended, and then we have the body of the satellite, and then we have the panels. And then we have the other panel, right? So you can imagine that here I'm looking at the plane right here. So if I draw my coordinate axis, I will have x over here and y over here, right? So this is the y and x, and I am looking at the top view. And this satellite is spinning this way. And we are given the dimensions, which is 1.5 meters and 0 0.3. Okay, so, and then the position two the panels are retracted. Therefore, we have the same hexagonal. We are given the radius of gyration, right, to calculate the mass moment of inertia. So we don't have to find the mass moment of inertia of an hexagonal, right? But then, when they are retracted, we see something like that over here where this over here is 0 0.3, right? And this dimension over here is 0 0.2. And here, this is also 0 0.2 meters. Okay, so having those two top views, so we understand that the configuration changed from one uh, moment to the next. And then we are given this angular velocity one, and we want to find this angular velocity in the second position. For To analyze this problem, we will use the principle of angular momentum, which states that the integral of the moment respect to one point, which is my point of rotation, which is the origin of my coordinate system, and since it's symmetrical, this represents the center of mass, will be equal to the angular momentum in the second position minus the angular momentum in the initial position. As you see, the plane of motion, which is x and y, is a, doesn't contain the force of the weight, because as you see, that force of the weight is perpendicular. This is the weight of the satellite, of the body of the satellite. This is the weight of each of the panels. So when I do this top view, the weight is perpendicular 
So it doesn't create a moment respect to the axis of rotation because it's parallel to that axis. So we can say that this quantity is equal to zero, and therefore we have conservation of angular momentum. And therefore, we have H2 is equals to H1. And in this case, you remember when we have a rigid body, the definition of angular momentum is the inertia times the angular velocity will be the mass moment of inertia times the angular velocity. So in this case, we have the two panels plus the body. And here, we have the two panels, but much smaller. So let's calculate the moment of inertia in the position one, which will be the mass moment of inertia of each of the arms of two panels, plus the inertia of the body, right? So that will be equals to two times. So, and as you remember, the, uh, you can look it up in the tables, that will be equals to 112, the mass, which is 15 for each, times the square of each of these distance, which is equal to 0 0.3 square plus 1.5 square. And then I, since in the table is given at the center of mass of each of these panels, right? So and I have to translate it to O. So I have to add the mass times that distance, and that distance will be the half of 1.5 plus 0 0.2. That will, that half of 1.5 is 0 0.75, plus 0.2 is 0 0.95 square. So that's the one for the two panels, and the one for the body. Remember that we are given the radius of gyration, and we are given the mass, so it's 200, 0 0.1 square. Okay, that value, I have the value right here, so let me write it right here, and that's equals to 34.282 kilograms meters squared. So we were able to find this one right here. So the second one, now we have the inertia also from the panels, but the panels are retracted, right? Plus the inertia of the body. The, inera, the inertia of the body didn't change, but the panels, yes, because they are much smaller. Actually, now we have only a bar, right? We don't have a uh, rectangle. So that will be equal to then to 2 times 112 the mass, but now we only have the height, right? 0 0.3 square, and of course, we have to translate this distance. So that will be equal to 50 and now this distance is 0 0.2 square. So in both cases, we apply the parallel axis theorem, but in this case, this was the center of mass, and this distance over here was 0 0.95, and in this case, this distance over here is given by 0 0.2, right? So we are, I don't need to write it extra because we have it already here. And then I have the one for the body, which is exactly the same one. Okay, now that we have this value, let me write it right here. And that value is 3.425282 kilograms meters squared. So I was able to calculate this one, and this one is given, right? Which is 0 0.5 gradients over a second. So we have here that, let me change color, so we, omega 2 will be equals to right here will be equals to the area, mass moment of inertia in the first position times the omega in the first position divided by the mass moment of inertia in the second position. So what happened is that since this is much bigger number than this one, it was compensated by the angular velocity. So since the angular momentum is conserved, when would you um, diminish it, the mass moment of inertia, then the velocity increases. So this value over here is now 5.098, which is actually, let me write 5.1, 5.1 5 
radiance over the second. And that's the solution of this problem. As you see, from 0 0.5 radiance over a second, we went all the way to 5.1 radiance over a second, and that happened because we reduce the uh, mass moment of inertia and then the angular velocity increased.